Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're at the home of Dr. Suzanne, and she's going to explain a little bit about herself and some of her community outreach projects that she's working on. Welcome, everyone, to the Greener Way Garden. As an Encore career and other senior citizens also who wanted to volunteer, we started Greener Way to give underserved populations. Uh, youth and academically challenged and underserved the opportunity to not only learn organic landscaping but to be mentored to whatever their goals in life are. I was blessed to meet uh, Dr. Malky who his uh, career is extensive but it impressed me as he's been gardening since age nine even though he's a lawyer, a chemist, a full product. I was so excited because I've been concerned about my avocado trees and the fruit orchard that the students have planted. And it's meant to be where they can come back year by year and see the beautiful things they made happen as they came through Greener Way. So I'd like to turn this over to Dr. Malky or Charles as he prefers to be called. But uh, do know you can always go to the web Greener Way uh, greenerwayassociates.org learn more about us and hopefully you'll come for our parties or to volunteer thank you and again the name of the website is greenerwayassociates.org greenerwayassociates.org um, the two or three topics that we're going to address while we're here in the garden in this particular video is um, one the importance of whitewashing your plants and typically when you install your plants it's important to um, protect them from the elements, predominantly sun stress, but the other ones are also insects and rodents. And we found um, behind us an apricot tree we're gonna zoom in shortly um, into, and you'll notice that it got girdled, whether it's by the lawnmower or I've noticed um, there's quite a bit of squirrels here in the community. Um, but girdling is a phenomenon that predominantly happens in the winter months when the um, rodents, whether they be, they could be rats, rats mice, um, gophers, um, any of those um, critters, typically in the winter when they're hungry for food, they'll resort to the trees and start girdling around the trees to get the saps out. Um, so we're going to visit that. We're going to visit the avocado trees in the um, garden that I noticed are also particularly stressed that could benefit. And for those of you who are like me, girdling means when the animal or the lawnmower starts to eat away the bark. And the bark actually is like our veins and arteries. They bring us our food. And the bark is where it's the vascular system where the tree gets its life. So the more it's girdled, the weaker and less healthy and eventually will die if it's not protected. This is why I invited Charles here because I can see the benefits of Ivy Organic for my garden and yours also. Awesome, thank you. Um, so historically, what I would say 90% of the farmers and gardeners across the country and around the world would typically do is they go to the paint department and they pick up a can of paint. Um, when it comes to paint, and you can take a look here at the back over here, it says warning, um, may cause serious illness such as um, brain damage, especially in children, pregnant women should um, also avoid exposure. Um, both products say known carcinogenic chemicals you know, in the product, but aside from the cancer causing elements that are in paint products, but they also have algicides and fungicides. When you apply paint to your furniture, your goal is to preserve it for decades um, and to prevent algae and fungi and all these other um, life-giving organisms to support themselves on those structures. So they have a lot of preservatives that are in fact harmful when applied to your trees and your plants in your garden. So that was the need for creating the Ivory Organics. And Ivory Organics takes it one step further. What it also has in it, if I can share with you the label here, you'll see that it's got seven natural oils, which include castor oil, cinnamon oil, clove oil, cedarwood oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, and rosemary oil, all of which work to defending the plant aside from just the sun by coating it, but the oils will now defend it from the insects as well as the rodents. So the first thing I want to share with you is this apricot tree here behind me. And let's check out some of the girdling that happened here. Follow me. So if you take a look here under the tree, you'll notice right near the base, it's been girdled almost all the way around and also going up the tree. And if you um, notice over here, there's a little bit of gum um, 
that's coming out of it. There's another word um, called gamosis, which is where um, there could be an insect or a bacterial infection that is causing the saps to leak out, but there's actually some sap coming out at a couple of these spots and as well as right over my finger over here as well. Um, so the goal is to seal this as this is all exposed wood. The bark is no longer protecting these exposed areas, but eventually if we can protect it and allow it to heal without further girdling by whatever is causing it, it'll now allow it to continue to expand and grow. The cambium tissues will fill in the area and it has a chance to eventually heal over and become the healthy structure that it otherwise should be. The other things I wanna point out before we um, start painting it is, I noticed a couple of prune jobs. Whoever came in last and pruned some of these suckers that were in this lower canopy didn't pr um, prune it all the way back to the tree trunk. Uh, by allowing this to exist, it's gonna end up with a bulge on the side of the tree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prune it as close as we can to the tree trunk, like so, so that it will eventually heal over and become part of the tree trunk and not result in a bulge. Um, and we can do the same like so as well. We're gonna try to bring that in as close as we can. Um, with a saw blade, we can also come in a little closer, but you gotta be careful not to damage the tree trunk when doing so. So Charles, what you were saying about gamosis is like, as it's losing that gum, it would be like a human being bleeding. It's definitely, Am I getting you? the and sap is all the nutrients and the sugars and um, even the hormones of the plant all flow up and down the tree trunk all the way down into the roots and from the roots back up into the um, shoots and leaves and fruit. So yeah, there's a system of, of flow that's going both up and down into the tree. And when there's damage like that, it's just leaking and making these sugars available to attracting more pests and more rodents to the site. I like your using the word flow as it's flowing up and down. I'm a retired psychologist and being in the flow, they've actually done statistical studies showing that your immunes are stronger, you live longer, you're healthier, and you're happier. And we know the universe is what they call holographic, meaning what goes on in one of us goes on in each of us in its own way. And I really want this tree to be a healthy, happy, long-lived tree. Because earlier, and I've lived here 40 years and it's always been organic, I had a beautiful, beautiful tangerine tree. You could ask all the neighbors. We all ate from it. And the gardener inadvertently would keep mowing into it. And oh, no. then another person came to trim it and did not do it properly. The bottom line is the tree died. And I won't let that happen ever again to any of our trees. So thank you, Charles, for being here. No, it's my pleasure. So when it comes to painting the trees, Ivory Organics also has three colors. Instead of whitewashing in the color white, which for the apricot tree, we will use white, but it's also available in colors brown as well as green, which we're gonna use those on other trees behind me as well. But to prepare this, if we open the can here, we're just gonna go like so. It comes with the organic powder as well as the oil vial that's bubble wrapped. So we're just gonna take off the wrap here. And the, this oil vial has the seven oils that'll defend the tree now against the insects and rodents. So we'll first add the powder to the can. So these are all organic ingredients, all, orga all of it is. They have to be for this garden. Of course, and I'll share something else as well. We also were reviewed um, by the State of Washington Department of Agriculture, and it's now registered material for use in organic agriculture. So Beautiful. this here was a process that took the company almost a year to accomplish. Um, so we just added the paint powder. I then like to fill it up halfway with water and then stir it like so. And then we can just add the oil to it so it doesn't get clumped up. That's the reason I add the water first and the oil second and we can continue stirring it now together. So you're calling it paint, but it really isn't paint. It's something uh, that's elastic or that allows the oils to stick to the tree, is that? The, the pattern that's behind it is that the um, solution offers a time release of the oils. So you can see here we've actually got it with half the consistency, we're now a tree paste. We're almost the thickness of a paste, but now we're gonna fill it up and it's gonna be an ideal Solution. I, I don't know if you can, can smell it. Smell yeah. it I was but about to I'm, say. I am a person who just gets carried away with aroma, and this is smelling so delicious, like a light peppermint smell right now. Yeah, that's one of the seven oils that are in here. So now we've got it in a brush on solution. You can see it's nice and loose. Beautiful. Like so. 
We'll put the spoon back in the can. And now we can start protecting the tree over here. So we're just gonna go with our brush and start coating. We're gonna coat those areas that we just pruned because those are possible entryways into the, what I like calling the heart of the tree being the lower branches and tree trunk. As long as we protect that, it can always create more branches to support the upper structure. Um, so here we are just coating the tree trunk. All of those pruned branches will be coated as well so that, again, insects can't bore their way into those exposed areas and find their way into the heart of the tree. And then we're gonna go down into the girdled area as well. So Charles, even if the cuts weren't there, are you recommending we do uh, do the painting with whether it's white, green, or brown, about, what is it, about 18 inches up to protect the quote-unquote heart of the tree, to protect the most vulnerable parts? Yeah, the most important part is probably the lower one or two feet, um, mm -hmm. you know, up to three feet. And then again, depending on sun exposure, right now we're in the shade, so we know that we're not dealing with any sun stress here, but we're gonna see other trees shortly that are sun stressed. But the predominant goal is we're protecting it from girdling. That's the main issue with this particular tree that we're um, gonna hopefully help it recover from and then protect in the future from by reapplying the product at least once a year. We can take a cut. I'm so glad you're painting that because it's, it's hitting me. Look at that, the indentations, how badly chewed this tree is. All of that right here. This tree isn't even four years on this property. It's maybe a four-year-old tree and uh, has been in the earth here for two years. It would sadden me to lose such a beautiful tree. I'm so grateful you're here. <laughs> you're very welcome. So what we did is we also removed a little bit of the soil around it to make sure that we got a little bit even below the soil level to make sure, and there was no damage actually at this level. You can see that all of the tree trunk is still intact, um, but we're now you know, basically coated it a little bit, a couple of inches below the dirt. We're gonna put it back, fill it once this dries on in the next like 20 minutes or so, and, um, and now we're good. We've protected a good two to three feet of the lower tree trunk from any future possibility of girdling. The next thing I wanna share with you is um, your, um, avocado tree but before we do if you want to come around just to see you know exactly what we did and and then let's go visit the avocado tree I never knew how important it is to do those nubs that stick out and to cut them close without hurting the tree bark itself so that they can heal and grow more smoothly I'm learning so much today okay. thank you I hope you'll do more videos to educate us for sure so thank here you we are now in front of one of your avocado trees what variety is this uh, I believe it's holiday yep here it is a holiday avocado so it's a naturally dwarf variety of um, avocados but um, I've noticed that there's a couple of issues with this tree for one it looks like it's lacking a lot more vigor than the avocado to my left um, that's probably the Haas avocado right that's uh, no that's a little cotta the little cotta so it's another dwarf variety um, avocado but you can see that that one's got a pretty cool canopy that's um, developing whereas this one over here has a lot of Sun that's hitting all of the olive I don't want to just say the lower even the upper branches and the entire tree trunk is exposed to too much Sun um, and I'll explain to you why in just a minute but before we do if you take a look at our shadow that's on the ground, the northern direction is in front of me. So I'm facing north and south is behind me. And when you're in the northern hemisphere above the equator, the whole northern hemisphere, the sun is hovering above, just slightly above or slightly below, depending on the time of the year, the equator. So if I'm facing north, the sun is behind me. The sun is rising in the east, setting in the west the ocean is to my right and the sun is always leaning on this side of the sky when you're in the northern hemisphere if you're in the southern hemisphere australia for example the opposite effect is going to happen and when you take a look at your trees in the garden what you'll notice especially like on this um holiday avocado you'll notice that this whole side of the tree which is facing on the south side you'll notice that it's all darker brown this is all sunburn on this side and I'm hoping you can capture it on the north side it's green because it's exposed to less light but on the south side you're gonna notice that it's completely brown and that's not brown from age that's brown from sunburn and this is damaged plant tissues 
that need and could have benefited from protection. So, so what you're telling me, Charles, is as I look here, this is really nice and green all the way down. And this is the part that's facing north. And then you come here, and I guess that's what they mean by the term southern exposure, that plants grow better with southern exposure, as my peppers have been growing beautifully throughout the winter even. But the tree has been burning because it's southern exposure. It's, it's exposed to the sun that is arcing this way. The southern side is always going to be the hottest side of the tree. So you can take a look at this the branch. Southern exposure. Southern exposure. So this branch over here burned out last year. These were all the, looks like it even attempted oh, wow. flowers. You can see the flowers are in here. Wow. So this was, you know, a branch that was supposed to support more flowers and leaves and, and growth. This year got burnt out. Um, again, this whole side, you can see that it's even cracking. So if you come in a little closer, you'll notice that it's, it's cracked which now the bark's damaged, and if the cambium tissue is damaged, now the wood underlying can also be damaged as well. As you work your way down, you can see the cracks again along the branches. And again, this is not from age, this is sunburn. The younger branches, and we're gonna see an avocado behind us, does not have these issues because it created a canopy. And when a plant is young like this, it could benefit from the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Protection. Another thing we're gonna do before we um, coat it is I noticed that you had two leading branches here. One that's supporting the majority of the branches and the height, and then this one over here, which is only supporting this one little weak branch. Instead of the plant supporting two leading branches, we're gonna remove this branch out, and let me get my pruners here. But what we're gonna do again is when we prune, we're gonna come in as close as we can to the tree trunk and prune it like so. And the goal is now all of the fluids, the waters, the sugars, the hormones, and everything that controls plant growth is going to be going up and down this joint. And again, there's nothing here that's going to allow for like dead wood. As the plant continues to expand and grow, it'll grow over that pruned damaged surface. And we're also going to coat that with the ivory organics as well. But this eventually will disappear as the tree trunk continues to expand and grow. And now it's ready for um, application of the Ivory Organics. For this yeah? particular plant, we're gonna use the Ivory Organics color brown. So we're gonna be using this um, to coat the tree just to show the contrast between the white and the brown protection. So here we go. So you got me thinking, Charles, because I just thought that was the bark and that's just a normal bark. But I was always surprised because this side, you could even see it here, is so green. And so what you're telling me, it's like a person with a severe case of sunburn. As I could even feel the sun on my neck now, and it's not really burning yet, but imagine if I was out in the sun 10, 12, 15 hours or whatever, that this poor little thing, because this is also two years in the soil, year old tree so it's four years old total yeah but two years here the other two was protected at the nursery but I didn't realize that I was really burning my tree that I was hurting it because the deeper a burn the more a person could actually even die and I see it died here and it died there or was dying there no it's a great point I'm glad you brought this up so um, if we were in the sun, I mean, and we're just a, you know, probably a mile away, you know better than me how close we are to the beach, but if we go to the beach, the first thing we do is cover our skins. We protect it from the sun, and, you know, and the goal is to minimize sunburn. As soon as you get a discoloration of the skin, that's a first degree burn. As soon as, um, you know, as soon as you start getting blisters and stuff on your skin, that's a second degree burn. And if you start damaging the tissues underlying your skin, that's a third degree burn that may even require grafting of skin in order to repair your body. So similarly, um, I wanna actually share with you a quick 30 second um, clip of an orange tree that I visited in um, North Hollywood just a few months ago. And the landscaper there pruned a branch that was offering the lower tree trunk and branches shade but when he pruned that branch out, it allowed too much sun exposure right in the middle of spring and summer. And within a matter of months, half of the plant's tree bark 
cracked, exposing all of the underlying wood. So a major catastrophe to that particular orange tree. And I want to share that with you real quickly for just a second. And let me show you why. Take a look underneath what happened here. And right here was the branch that was pruned. And you can see how large it was. It was at least 20, possibly 30 years old um, right here. And this went up and out in the direction of the swimming pool. And that was probably the reason it was pruned. And then take a look at what happened underneath. Look at the bark, how it's peeling. All of this is dead, dead skin. If this was your body, this would be your skin coming off. And it goes all the way down, all the way down. All of that damage. Take a look at those cracks. These are third degree burns on a plant. And I don't know if anyone has ever described this as third degree burns, but this is a third degree plant burn. The epidermis, the dermis, and it's damaged all the way to where the wood is. So this is now a perfect entryway for termites and wood boring beetles to get into the tree and start hollowing out the center of the plant. The other thing I wanna point out here is the sun, and it'll be out here in about the next hour, is shining on this side of the plant. If you were to go around back, I don't know if you can work your way around with the camera, you'll notice that this entire back side of the plant is not damaged. And this is the side that's actually now bringing the sugars and the juices um, and all the life-giving um, support is coming from the backside, the shaded part of the plant. And what we're gonna do here today is actually um, coat and protect this part of the plant and actually we'll, for cosmetic, we'll actually even paint the backside as well so it all looks uniform. But we're gonna cover this with a product called Ivory Organics. And I was wondering why, Charles? So I'm doing a second coat um, just to offer you know maximum protection. You can see that all the cracks and crevices that still exist even though it's coated. I'm now filling it in with the second application. You can still see all the indentations. It's now been filled in with the product if you look up here at the joint. And by putting a second coat, all of that's getting filled in substantially better. The other thing too with all of this greenwood, which I didn't work my way all the way up, but you can see as we get higher, it gets harder for the product to adhere to the green waxy um, surfaces. So by still applying it, we've still coated it, but um, it would be more effective to actually put a second and third coat over this to get it re a really good coverage as if we're putting cloth on. Like it's as if, you know, it doesn't matter what your color of the shirt is. I know there's colors brown and green as well as white, but the colors are also light and, um, and it's offering protection as if it's, we're putting on a shirt. Doesn't matter what the color is, those surfaces that are now coated will now be protected from sunburn as well as in the winter it offers protection from sun scald as well which is another phenomenon which is equally important to having a healthy tree in your garden yeah. so so what you're telling me is until the tree grows a little bit older i really have to coat the entire tree and because there's so much beautiful green still showing it's such a new tree it's such a baby and then once um, it really starts to grow, maybe once or twice a year if it needs it, depending on if we're having a drought or whatever, because I almost lost my 70-year-old Chinese elm this uh, year, thanks to the drought. Oh, wow. So, but thank heavens it's coming back, but I wished I'd known more about you and what you're doing then so i'm so glad that you're making this video available to all of us you're very welcome the other thing i want to do is um we talked about this branch over here that was mm -hmm. dead and more likely than not burned due to sunburn last year because you can tell it got as far as flowering before it died so it made it through spring but it just couldn't make it through summer but we're going to cut that off again pruning as close as we can to the tree trunk and then again we're going to go with the ivory organics product and seal the wound as well. Um, the other thing that's important as well with avocados, and especially while young, is to coat even all of the leaves. These leaves are very young and tender. Um, and I know here in Culver City, the risk of sunburn is very minimal. Your temperature is probably rarely get in the 90s. Does oh, it? no, no. We you actually get a lot of 90s here? the high 90s last summer. Oh, wow. And summer hasn't even begun yet. so. Uh... So once you get in the 90s, typically all of this young growth, which is indicated by, you can see it's more purplish in color, but the younger growth will completely wilt once you get in the mid 90s on avocados, citrus trees are especially prone. Um, these are the especially sensitive plants, but even your more vigorous plants can benefit from the sunblock protection. And you can also get the Ivory Organics in a ready to use spray bottle 
And this here is the Ivory Organic Spray on, you can use it on your trunks, branches, and leaves, but we wanted the best protection for the trunk and branches, and that's the reason we painted it on. But we'll now use this as a foliar spray to basically lighten the entire plant by several degrees. So we're gonna do that awesome, next. Awesome, because I was wondering, because many, many trees in Culver City, you'll see really old established trees and the leaves are all just curled and burnt at the end. This is definitely last year's sunburn damage that, hang, that hung on until this year. Eventually this leaf will fall off as it's being replaced by the new growth. But what we're gonna do is we simply take the Ivory Organic Spray and you can see that we're wow. lightening the entire plant. And even though it looks pretty white now, we're gonna come and revisit it in another 10, 15 minutes once it dries off and you'll see that it makes a very light, faint sunblock protection on all of the leaves that are coated, as well as these harder to reach um, branches and trunks that can also be sprayed as well. Beautiful. And again, it's a feast for your olfactory. It's a feast for <laughs> aromas as he's spraying. It smells so pleasant. So I'm imagining the plant is really enjoying it also. Wonderful. The tree is. I can see why you're putting a second coat on because the new growth and the new tree here being so green and rubbery, the first coating didn't look like it was sticking, but look at it now. This is awesome. I imagine the new growth on the citrus also will probably need the two coats just to keep it safe for sure. Absolutely. So before I start coating this plant with, and this is again the little cotto with the Ivory Organics now colored green, I've noticed that again these were branches that were pruned historically that were not brought in close enough to the tree trunk. So as the tree trunk expands, these pieces of wood, which were um, originally branches, are going to continue protruding and sticking out. And this is a perfect entryway for pathogens um, and pests to get in there, which includes the beetles and the termites and other insects oh, wow. that'll enter this and then work their way into the heart of the tree. So what it's we're going to... just like they're entering a tunnel. Exactly. Well, it even is a tunnel and a beetle may have already already formed something to get into the heart of the tree. But what we're going to, you can see like there's a hole right there in the middle of the branch. So what we're going to do is we're going to prune this as close as we can. You can see that it's still quite dry, but we're going to then seal that, which is still wood and it's not protected with bark or cambium tissues. And then we're going to do the same up here as well. And we're just going to rub that out. And now the um, cambium can callus and eventually close this. Whereas before it would take years for the plant to get thick enough to grow over those branches. And now we're just going to... Thank you, that, that is a new thing I've learned in addition to what a wonderful protector IB Organics is. And then here we are just... my favorite color now being painted on the tree. Now I know your favorite color. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And there we go. Now we got Ivory Organics color green. So we have a color palette here. And for anyone who is interested, again, go to our website, greenawayassociates.org. This video will be posted there, as well as on the Ivy Organics website and others. Good. But if you're in the area, you can contact us at greenawayassociates.org. And we will invite you to our midsummer, our summer solstice lawn party. You'll actually get a quick tour of the garden, the front here, the side, and the back. Today we're only in the front orchard. And uh, any vegetables that are producing or fruit, you're welcome to pick a piece. And we will have a wonderful, wonderful potluck party. Uh, I'm looking, fun. I'm looking so forward to being there. Midsummer on a Saturday from 11 till 1 ish, or till people. Uh, you know, enjoy themselves and want to hang longer under the shade of the uh, big, big Chinese elm in the back, you're welcome to. Wonderful. Um, one other thing um, that I want to bring in for the viewers is I noticed as I pulled back these tomatoes that were growing so closely to the avocado, is that all of these roots are exposed as well. So um, something was digging around the tree and displacing a lot of the soil around the tree. So someone um, you know, hopefully later on we can come back with some compost and some soil and fill it up back to the soil level so all these um, roots are not exposed to the air and instead we get them back into the um, soil level. And then the last thing we're going to do real quick is now give it a nice, cool foliar spray which is not just going to protect the plant from sunburn as we get into now summer being we're now in the middle of May. But another thing I observed is some of these leaves even got chewed up as well. Mm -hmm. 
And this could be caused either by caterpillars or more likely not some grasshoppers that are flying around the community and just gnawing on some of the fresh growth. And the leaves that are protected with the ivory organics has the seven oils that will naturally repel a lot of the pests from damaging the leaves. Would it be okay to spray or paint the roots before we cover them with compost, Charles? The upper roots, like the, the higher roots, it's not a problem. And as you saw with the apricot, we even went about an inch or two also below the soil level. It's, it's recommended only to prevent Again, um, any rodents from... Right, because I think it may have been squirrels, either that or a garden, gardener cleaned it too much since it looks like something was still digging. learning, yes. Another thing is gophers are really oh. attracted to the base of trees. It's a perfect habitat where there's a lot of life, a lot of worms and a lot of grubs and a lot of um, life usually surrounds the root ball. So it could have easily been some type of ground critter that is trying to make it home and that soil just may have been displaced. But it's important right. to hopefully fill that up now that we discovered it upon pulling those tomato Will plants do. Will back. Do. Um, the other thing too I noticed with the fruit on it, another question people ask is, is it okay to apply the ivory organics, foliar spray, if there's fruit on the plant? And the answer is yes. Um, you can also Google sunburn fruit. Like here's an example, but this is an um, example. What type Maybe of citrus orange. is this? So this is an orange tree. Um, obviously the tree is aborting or letting go of this fruit. It's, it's deciding to not hold on to it. There might be fruit in other places, but for whatever reason, this tree is gonna fall off soon. But you'll see examples where sometimes very ripe fruit and on the southern exposure, which is the side that we're on right now, gets too much sun and that sometimes burns the fruit. It burns the leaf, it burns the bark as we saw earlier on the avocado. So adding a foliar spray will help it if you get it on the fruit and you're going to eat the skin, it's recommended you just wash it with soap and water and maybe use like a, um, a sponge, like your dish sponge to, to, to get the product off. But otherwise, um, like with your avocado, I don't think you're eating the skin. So yeah. you're protecting the skin, which is ultimately going to protect the fruit you know, inside better than if there's sunburn because it's going to act like a bruise and potentially damage that whole side of the fruit. So the next thing we're going to do is um, spray this plant, which we'll do um, momentarily, but I want to show you this avocado now that it dried on. You can see what the Ivory Organics dry spray looks like. I'd rather have this. Uh, thank you. I'd rather have this coating my uh, trees than leaf miner and a bunch of other things that like to eat away at our fruit trees. Yeah, thank the you. plants are definitely far more protected, and you're very welcome. Work with mildew also. Yeah, so you got actually got the first leaf. indication of leaf miner right yeah, there. Yeah, if you take yeah. a look real quick, we have um, the caterpillar. I'm hoping you can actually see this here on the camera. It's right there, and it's actually the larva of a either a moth or a fly that is living right in between the two layers of the leaf. It's not on the top. You can see I'll rub my finger across it. It's still there. Nor is it at the bottom. You can still see it right there. You can't move it. Actually, it just fell out. It's right there. It somehow scraped out. Look but it, right here, and on this leaf, look at. There's it. another one. Yeah, it, it's actually walking here. Get stand on that side. There. Do you see that? Oh, so there's the pest. Right there. Yeah. Great observation. And it it flies, just jumped. It It just flew. What our product has been used successfully by a lot of growers across the country is the leaf finder season. It looks like it's starting now. Here we are at the middle of May, but. Between now and June, most citrus trees, and especially on the new tender leaf growth, you'll you got to start looking for it. You'll start noticing um, those tunnels that are um, zigzagging their way into the leaf. And one of the main ways for treating it is by spraying it with a mineral oil or a neem oil. And typically, the late afternoon, after the highest temperatures for the day is, have passed, they'll spray the plants with the neem oil or a mineral oil, which helps control and, and ultimately kill those citrus leaf miner larvae that are between the leaf. Mm -hmm. But what a lot of growers are doing is the following morning after the product's been on the plant overnight, is they'll then spray with the ivory organics foliar spray to bring the plant back to a cooler temperature because the sprayed oils will in fact oh, burn yeah. your leaves, burn the fruit, burn anything that those oils are on because the oils are not gonna intensify the light rays and intensify the heat against the plant. So spraying the plants in the evening with the oils followed by ivory against foliar spray in the morning to keep the plant cool before the next uh, belt of, of heat waves. Yeah. Beautiful. So I'm glad we Thank I'm glad you. we got to see this. Thank you. Oh look at this. Yeah, no, another insect. Is that a grasshopper or is that a praying mantis? Sorry. A baby mantis or a grasshopper? Right there. 
That's part of an organic garden. You got your pests and your predators. And that's it. That's all it takes. Oh, do it again and say it as, as you're spraying. Uh, so we're just applying the Ivory Organics Foliar Spray to help keep the entire plant cool. We're targeting all of the newer leaves. And the goal, again, is to help keep the plant a lot cooler as we're going into the summer months so it's not beat up and wasting resources just trying to stay alive in the summer heat. So I shouldn't be seeing, like, dead curly leaves mid-summer on the avocados as so many in our neighborhood have. There should, yeah, there should be no wilting happening as a result of, you know, the summer heat. Um, all of the new flesh of growth is now protected. If it puts out another... Um, you know, another growth spurt in the middle of summer, which is expected, you can spray that one more time with your, um, with your um, leftover product. So one spray is sufficient for the summer? Or? One time, and actually one spray could be enough for the entire year. It lasts at least one, if not two seasons. So, awesome. so awesome. your leaves are protected. So it's You're very good. economical. Absolutely. In the long run, it's really worth it. For sure. So let's, let's go to our- The garden is planted and maintained by students and volunteers, people who are committed to organic gardening and for the students either to learn to become landscapers, organic landscapers, or for us to mentor them as they're learning gardening to go on to finish high school, college, or get paying jobs in whatever is their career choice. And everything here at Greener Way Associates is in the making in that we have the students do it so that they have ownership can come back at any time in their life and point out that this is what they helped make happen. We hope you will become a Greener Way Associates volunteer also. Thank such a, you. Such a great program. Thank you for giving us a tour of the garden. I've noticed that all of your trees are manageable. Some people think when they plant a fruit tree it's got to be you know 20, 30 feet you know with fruit that requires machines to you know cherry pickers to get to the top of these um, fruit trees but everything in your garden all the fruit are within picking range. Um, did you strategically select dwarf and semi-dwarf trees or I mean did you kind of forecast this ahead or? Yes, that is the intent because we'd like this to be a community garden in the sense that the community, the community of learners, of volunteers, uh, many of whom come from 20-30 miles to be here, uh, live you know elsewhere, so the community of students, volunteers, and neighbors can come in, sit and rest a while, pick some fruit, and enjoy it, or tomatoes, veggies. We have some tomatoes that no, I, I see some red ones in here as well. already starting yeah. to come through. So uh, the garden is meant to create community because a garden always produces much, much more than you need it. And now I feel so blessed that I have two new friends. Thank you. And my trees will produce even more thanks to the plant guard. Thank you for being here, Charles. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Well, let's get on to now painting the, I believe this is your holiday one you said, or let's see if it's this got a label. This is Little Cotto. This is your Little Cotto. It's and, called Little Cotto. And, and the I surprising think it's an thing. A and B. Oh, oh um, but typically an avocado will be either a type A or a type B. If you just have one avocado, it will by itself be self-fruitful, meaning the flowers can self-pollinate one another. And an avocado will produce plenty of fruit, but if you want to increase your fruit yields an extra 5 to 20% more, then you'll plant a type A with a type B. And I don't know, I didn't do my research in advance to find out um, if your little cotto is a type A or a type B. Um, but the cool thing in here is, check out these fruit. We're literally only maybe two feet off the ground, and there's several of these little guys. We've already eaten five of them and the fruit is succulent. Here's another one. The, the fruit tastes even better than the organic avocados I bought at the store. So little cotto. Nothing like picking it off your own tree and having it for breakfast or lunch or as a snack. By the way, are avocados native to California? So avocados are either typically from regions of Mexico or Guatemala. And most of the history and also um, India, I believe, has some historical traces with avocados being, you know, originated there as well. So, so India, Mexico, Guatemala, all 
tropical regions. Um, but that's, that's a great question and that leads me off to another important um, point. Um, I get a lot of emails and questions from a lot of growers that are saying, how would these trees naturally grow on their own? Why do they require so much care? Why do they need to be pruned? Why do they need to be fertilized? Why do we gotta be doing all of these things to produce fruit? And one is producing and one is maximizing yield. So if you want your trees to reach its potential, and again, we're growing them outside of its growing zone. These are not native plants to Culver City. Here we are, and I'm in Los Angeles, so not native to Los Angeles, but we're making them grow, and we're doing our best to you know, plant them in the right places. And even within a garden, there's also something called microclimate, oh, which yes. we can you know, decide, is this avocado gonna benefit more from the full sun in the front yard or the partial sun in the backyard? And, and balancing light and balancing you know, soil and balancing, you know, composting and fertilizing and, and all of these other needs. And Ivy Organics just offers one more thing that has been known for hundreds if not thousands of years, which is whitewashing, which is protecting exposed areas from sunburn. And then we just took it a step further and said, we're also offering protection from insects and rodents as well with the application of the product. So I'm gonna to start to um, painting this tree right away some damage here and I'm not sure what caused it or what I should do to prevent it. So there's obviously some type of pest that came and decided to chew on these young tender leaves. Um, the youngest leaves are more appetizing to pests than the more established and thicker leaves that are behind it. Um, so with these leaves, when they're younger, they more likely than not got preyed upon by either a grasshopper or some other, it could be a caterpillar, just any other type of pest. Um, if this plant was younger and smaller and all of the leaves were in, you know, potentially compromised to the point that it could affect the health of the plant, I would consider spraying with the Ivory Organics. I know with our climate right now, your apricot tree should be fine um, in regards to, you know, being coated with the Ivory Organics. If you feel like it's sun stress or you know we're gonna be going into temperatures in excess of 100 degrees. Um, and again, for avocados, once you're in 90s, I would be concerned, your citrus in the 90s, I would be concerned, especially exposed branches and tree trunks. But uh, I know your apricot's got a beautiful canopy. We've protected the girdling near the base. Um, but with this being, it's the only branch that's indicated any, um, any stress with um, harm from pests. All I would do is simply prune it. And when I prune, I wanna share this technique with you. I would just go down to the next healthiest region, which is, you can see there's some damage here and damage here and damage there. Um, but I'd go down to like the next best leaf and I'd find that node, which is right here. And you can see that there's a little bud right there where my, um, my scissors are. And I would cut at an angle about a quarter of an inch above the node and prune it like so. And you can see that it looks very natural now again for the flu flow of the waters and the sugars um, through the stem and that's going to go right into the node and create the continuation of the branch from there and more likely than not check out this ladybug talking about pests and predators earlier earlier this one here is one of our predators in the garden this one here will help control any aphid populations that might be within the garden um, so an important element within the organic garden is to be gardening organically to preserve not just your predators that are keeping your prey in check, but also making sure that you've got some prey in your garden also. When you see the aphid, that's part of having a healthy garden. Thank you, thank you. You're what very about, welcome. What about rose bushes, Charles? So rose bushes, I noticed over here you pruned your roses, and, yes. um, and I can still see you've got a lot of the stems all around your rose bush as well. And instead of going in with your paintbrush and brushing all of these thorny stems, which would be pretty harsh on your brush, um, you can just, again, go with the Ivory Organics Foliar Spray. And what I'm gonna do is just spray the leaves, and you can actually get into it and start also spraying the tree trunk as well, because now all of the trunk is exposed to light when before it was in the canopy and the shade of all of those other branches that you've now opened up right at the beginning. I mean, we're right in the middle of May, but we're a few weeks away from the hottest days of summer um, with June coming right around the corner. So we're just gonna spray all of those leaves and if you come in a little closer, you can see that I've coated the stems. You can see that it's just dripping down the side. You can see that light, lighter white. And also the leaves you can see here are now sprayed with the Ivory Organics Foliar Spray. Beautiful. 
beautiful and this will protect it during the summer so it can keep flowering. Thank you so very, very much. I'm so grateful for your presence here at Greenaway Associates. Charles. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and, um, and I look forward to continue, continuously working with you in the years to come. Yes. Thank yes. you. So if you've enjoyed this educational moment by Ivory Organics, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this as well as many other educational gardening videos. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening. Mm -hmm.